Hey there, this is Kevin. Um, today I'm going to show you some uh, uh, the demo of the Leo simulator. Here is the link to the GitHub. Uh, I hope everybody can download the code and running the demo in your own computer and try to break it. Yeah, you break it, I think. By the time you see the video, probably I will update some part, but the URL should work. If you find something different, just because of the new updates. For those who don't know what Trusted Computing is, and what the Leo project is, I uh, recommend that you go to the GitHub to read the uh, uh, introduction. Um, there are uh, some slides I did the presentation in the World Bank group back to April 2019. So I will spend a few minutes today to briefly talk about what the trusted computing is. I'm very brief. We separate the world into untrusted world and the trusted world. There are three layers in between. Layer one is a traditional blockchain, just like Bitcoin, uh, Elastos, Ethereum. And uh, on top of that is uh, layer two, which we are working on. We call it a, a trusted P2P network. This is also something I'm going to demo today. On top of that, once we have the trusted network, we actually can do a lot of things in the sawtooth, uh, hyperledger sawtooth, which is very simple very easy uh, consensus because uh, they have the trust. The trust of the P2P network we're talking about today is a permissioned network for the trusted nodes only. So a node want to join the network, you have to have passed a kind of uh, a remote attestation. You have to provide the a POT, which is a we mean um, proof of trust to other nodes. The other nodes will run a consensus to make a decision on if you are if you are a trusted node or you are not trusted. If you are, you are allowed to join the network and you are issued a, uh, a number, which is we call a credit score. The higher credit score you have, um, the higher voting power in this network. The proof of trust, a POT actually coming from uh, a virus source, uh, like uh, hardware TPM, um, like from CPU, like SGX or Trust Zone, SMM, or pure software from cryptographic uh, algorithm. We, we still use layer one as a uh, kind of uh, uh, immutable storage and also a smart contract. Um, because we need using this kind of economy incentive to guarantee uh, the system is working. The demo would be very easy. Um, most of the, uh, the the parts we're talking about today, I will not cover. We'll only cover about the, uh, the consensus part and uh, the communication between layer two and layer one. All the other part, like uh, the, the hardware TPM and uh, how we determine based on the uh, proof of trust, uh, I didn't do anything on that. We just use a placeholder or a simulator. Uh, we will cover that later in our other demo. The demo is very simple. We have a, a Node.js uh, layer one simulator to simulate the, uh, the blockchain. We have uh, uh, several browser running JavaScript code as uh, nodes, or maybe we call it minor machine or users. And between them, we have uh, three uh, different peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer communication um, Channels uh, we call rooms like town hall, uh, trust, uh, task room, and block room. Because we use simulator of the uh, blockchain, so we can easily using manual uh, block generation. So in that case, we can stop or pause between each uh, block. We actually can see what happened during the period of time. Uh, yes, yeah, so you actually can turn on the automatic generation, but uh, the problem is uh, once it's uh, automatic running, it will be sometimes it's too fast. You you probably didn't, uh, you don't have enough time to see what happened in this block and next block is coming up. So I recommend you you starting from the manual uh, block generation instead of the, uh, um, the auto. Today I'm going to show you two use cases. The first one is when a new node who is not trusted yet join the trusted network after paying the gas fee and uh, get a remote attestation from other credit nodes. 
After that, he can join. The second is uh, a use case of uh, a trust computing task, uh, which uh, one knows has code, another has data, but they don't trust each other. They still want to use the, uh, the code, uh, the algorithm, for example, the AI model training, and the data to get some, uh, uh, train the, uh, the AI model. We will go to, we will show the process in the slides first, then we're going to show you the real demo in the simulator. The new nodes join the network is something like this. Um, for example, user zero, uh, this is a new node, it doesn't have any credit, it doesn't have any gas. He wants to join the network. And the other nodes, like user five, all the other nodes within gray, gray color, they already join the network, they have a different credit scores, some of them, uh, because joined because the uh, founders they, they, they were there since the Genesis block, and some nodes which just uh, joined before the user zero, they already have the credit, so they have the uh, right to do remote attestation on other new nodes. So the first step is uh, um, the user one, user zero has to pay to get some gas. Uh, we use Leo as a gas in. Uh, in our network, just like um, uh, Ether is the gas in the Ethereum network. Uh, so, for example, user zero buy uh, from user eight um, in some uh, decentralized exchange um, on layer one of the blockchain. They pay US dollar or pay ALA to buy some Leo, I say buy uh, 20 or 30 Leo. So, after that, the user zero will have some gas to pay for the remote test station. Step two is a user uh, zero. The uh, uh, he start a transaction to the blockchain, to the layer one blockchain. Pay ten Leo to 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 start the uh, to get the remote attestation from other nodes. Once the transaction is in the blockchain, the, in the next block, all the other nodes will receive the the new block with the transaction saying. A user zero is trying to join the network. So all the other nodes who want to make the money on that, they can try to run a VIF function based on the transaction hash plus the uh, um, the block the new blocks hash. Uh, this is a message and run a, uh, running the VRF to make sure who gonna uh, win uh, the competition will have the right to earn the money and do the remote attestation. Usually the higher credit score, like user 18, have a, he has a higher credit score, they have a higher win, win rate to win in the competition. Let's see, uh, we, uh, for example, we have a three nodes, like uh, 18, uh, number five, and the 12. Those three nodes are the winners of the uh, um, of the uh, VRF uh, sortation, they can starting to ask uh, user zero for the uh, the proof of trust. So every time they ask the user zero for anything, uh, he has to provide a proof of the VRF to make sure user zero will know he actually uh, he is the uh, uh, the winner of the competition and he is the real remote testator. After user zero uh, confirm that by running uh, the VRF verification, user zero will send his own proof of trust from the TPM. Uh, we use the TPM, for example, in this case. Send the T POT uh, back to the remote that has test hitter, like 5, 18, and 12. And uh, after that, those three nodes will running a um, remote attached algorithm inside your nodes, they can make a decision on if he thinks the new node, the node zero, is trusted or not trusted. So they can have a different vote, like uh, eight vote yes, 18 vote yes. And, but number three, uh, oh sorry, not the, number three vote no, and number uh, five, uh, network broken, he actually he lost the chance to have a response. Uh, we also consider this a scenario like some node may just uh, 
are either um, off go offline or broke whatever power out or something, uh, they cannot continue the test station. So this is a uh, user case. So after they have uh, the, the vote and they send the transaction back to the blockchain, um, tell the blockchain the result of his uh, own decision. And the blockchain will run a, uh, a smart contract based on their vote. The consensus is a weighted vote. For example, 18 has a higher score and 18 will have a higher weight on the decision. So all the nodes who vote um, is the same as the final result will get a reward. And who, like number three, they vote no, but actually the, the, the answer is yes. And uh, the number three will get some small punishment. And after the, uh, the smart counter running the consensus, the smart counter will issue the reward to uh, the nodes who uh, did good things and the punishment to the node who did bad thing, and also for the user zero, they get the uh, credit uh, from uh, after the uh, remote test session because the uh, he is uh, recognized a good node and welcome to join the uh, the trust network. So now we're going to show you the real demo. In order to run this demo, you would better have a bigger screen like I have, uh, so that you can have uh, many nodes running simultaneously. You can see all the nodes running. Uh, we're starting from uh, a um, command line. Uh, before you want, you can try the the demo. You probably need to install some uh, the Docker's Node.js uh, many stuff. I, I'm not going to show you right now. We probably have another uh, tutorial on how to set up the uh, running environment. So let's start for the work. So this command line, uh, this part is uh, a, a um, the layer one simulator. So at the beginning, we're going to show uh, there will be uh, uh, I will be asking for three questions. Uh, first is, uh, you know, run the uh, IPFS uh, bootstrap. Uh, I use local because I'm currently running a local IPFS uh, bootstrap. I can make um, everything go faster. Uh, you're totally fine. You can just uh, want to use the, uh, the, uh, the public IPFS uh, bootstrap. You just uh, press enter. Or you have a different IP address you're going to use. You just type in the IP address. I use local because I type local. The second is, uh, do you want to automatically generate the uh, um, the block, new blocks, or manually? Uh, I prefer manually right now because we have enough time to explain to you what happened during uh, block one and block two. If uh, I set a uh, a time like uh, fifteen minutes, so every fifteen minutes we got a new block generated. Sometimes I don't have enough time to to explain what happened before new blocks coming up. So that's why I leave it empty. So that means uh, manually. So every time I have to manually click generate a new block, and a new block will come up. Uh, before I do that, uh, there will, will not be any new block coming. The last question would be, uh, you, uh, what is the uh, random uh, name of the room? Because uh, this demo will be running by uh, many people on the public IPFS. So if we use the same uh, room name, we may get a lot of interference between different users. So I will choose uh, whatever number or string here so other people will not use the same room. They didn't know uh, the room I choose. I type one, or you can leave it empty for any uh, random number. I, I use just use one, whatever. You can use whatever you want, your name, your birthday, whatever. So now you can see the system running uh, on port 3000. And uh, now I'm going to the browser, uh, localhost 3000. So this is a stake page saying a disclaimer. Um, I just uh, apologize for all the uh, rush uh, work and the dirty code. I know it's dirty um, because I only have a three weeks to make this demo. Um, time is limited, so I try to do everything quick and dirty. So if you don't like it, try to send me some X. All right, let's start the simulator. Uh, here we have uh, uh, 20 nodes, we, which is uh, presets. Um, 
I already know that we have a link. I can open some of them uh, in different browser tab and then move the tab over. And uh, each tab, uh, each user actually have a, a different preset of the uh, um, the uh, um, gas or uh, credit level. So I'll just grab it. So I, I will just uh, tell up on my desktop. Um, you can see the benefit to have a bigger screen, so you actually can see what happened for each node. If you have a smaller screen, you probably cannot see uh, the overall situation, and also um, because uh, oh, sorry. And uh, also because uh, the the Chrome has a uh, a feature uh, to to mi minimize the activity for the tabs on the uh, the background, so likely your your tab which is will be um, in the running in the background will be very slow. I don't want that happen, so I just put every node on the uh, um, on the desktop. Oh, here you go. You can see all the nodes are running now. You can see in each uh, simulator, you can see the user name here and the current block number. We don't have any new block yet because I set to menu, uh, menu node generation, so you don't have any block yet. This is showing how many Leo in your bank account. This number shows how many credit you have. You can add a transaction here by typing a uh, button and uh, modify the number here and, and send the, the request to the layer one. Below that, there is the, the log. Uh, you can see what ha what currently happening in this node. Uh, let's generate the first block here. Then we can see um, what is the, what can the chain here. So generate the first block. Uh, you can see the block the content of block here in the in this browser, you can see what happened. You can see how many nodes are running online right now. Uh, if you go back to the uh, the browser, you can see um, each you each node have a different number right now. Uh, for example, number seventeen, they have a fifty Leo, and five credit points. And this is user zero, which uh, we use user zero as a new node. He currently has no uh, gas, no Leo, no points, because the new nodes, other nodes, or already have some credit. So for him, he want to uh, to do some kind of a remote testing to join the network, but he doesn't have money. So I have to go to the uh, uh, the layer one to buy some Leo. You know, let's see, uh, we buy from, uh, let's see, from, from this guy, from number eight, because number eight has $80, he is pretty rich, so we're gonna, He'd like to sell some uh, Leo to uh, to the user one, and what he can do is I uh, make a new transaction to send. I say uh, let's say user one will buy uh, like thirty Leo from uh, this guy. He's gonna send thirty. So after that, the transaction will be sent to the layer layer one, the blockchain. But before the new block is generated, nothing gonna happen because the they are just waiting for the new block. Now I generate a new block. Just refresh this page, it will generate a new block. Or you can go to the original page and generate a new block so you can see uh, the different block. Uh, this is block uh, uh, one, this is block two, if you really want to see what happened before we go back to the uh, to the history, you can do that as well. So you can see uh, the block two issued, we have uh, uh, the zero uh, user zero has thirty uh, Leo already, and uh, this guy uh, lost uh, thirty because it's transferred to user one. And right now they are all on block number two. That's that's totally correct, right? And then user zero has uh, thirty Leo. He can start doing uh, ask uh, asking to to join the network. So you're gonna do the second task. It's, uh, um, I want join, so I want to uh, pay 10 uh, Leo, which is a minim minimized, uh, minimized requirement to join. And I'm going to send the uh, action to layer one. And uh, the same, we, we're going to 
create a new block, see what's going to happen. So now layers uh, block number three. Say, right now you can see uh, the node had different log. Uh, for example, this guy, number three, he's had bad luck 20 times because uh, he failed in the VRF. But other nodes, like a, a user, uh, is it 15? 15 actually uh, got, uh, um, uh, he's a one of the winner. Um, he, uh, let me see, uh, he uh, has uh, uh, a J, J level, J means uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the answer of the so, uh, VRF sortation. Uh, if you don't know that, probably gonna read something about Algorand talking about the, uh, what the J level is. Uh, he, this guy is lucky, and this guy is lucky, this guy is lucky. Uh, this guy is not lucky, and uh, not lucky, this guy not lucky. So you can see one, two, three, three nodes. Uh, they win, they won the competition, they already sent the uh, um, requirement for the POT to the, this user, uh, user zero. Uh, we can see the log of user zero. Uh, the user zero has already got the, uh, the requirement for, from those three remote attack scissors. And uh, one by one, he verified the VRF and then sent back the remote test hitters, the POT. This is the POT. How now, those three nodes already got the uh, POT, they have made the decision already. So this guy said, uh, yes, uh, true. And the result is true. And this guy said, true. This guy said, true. So they all, they all agree user zero is a good guy. So they already post the transaction to the, uh, the test room. So in the next block, we would say um, the uh, uh, user zero got the uh, the credit. Let's see what happens. Um, not yet, uh, because uh, we still have uh, one more block to issue uh, the changes to the new nodes. Uh, by the way, you can see uh, this node has a, a 10 Leo less than before. Currently, it's a 50 in this new block. It is a number worse uh, 60. Because uh, anyone who wants to join uh, the remote attack station, they have to pay the same amount of the money uh, the, the, new, uh, the new node is going to uh, pay in the escrow because uh, we need to make sure that you, you have some deposit in the escrow. What if you do something bad, you, you, your escrow will be, be fatigued. Now let's go into next. Uh, we, we, we don't need to create a new window, we just refresh. So now we can see uh, uh, this guy, um, zero number, uh, user zero, they already got the, uh, the nine points with the initial point for a new, uh, for a new node. And uh, he only have uh, uh, 20 left. And uh, another nodes like this guy, um, they doing the good job to, to do the remote attestation. So they get his original 10 Leo back plus three, uh, three pounds, three, three, three uh, Leo as a bonus. So they're gonna share the 10 Leo, uh, which is paid by the uh, user zero. So now you can see uh, they all get the uh, same result. Now let's move on to the second use case. This is more complicated than the first one. Again, we starting from the concepts on the slides, then we move on to the real um, online demo. Uh, the user case is like this, um, the two nodes, A and B, um, one has the code, uh, algorithm for example, like the AI training model. Another node, B, they have a data, uh, but the data is very sensitive. They don't trust each other, they don't want to give the data to A, and uh, A doesn't want to give the code to the B because they don't know if other, the other side will release or disclose. So, but they have to work together to get the uh, get the um, the model trained using the data. So the solution will be, they can put the uh, the test into the uh, uh, trusted network, and the VRF function will randomly select some uh, one or few execution node to run it because uh, no one can predict who's gonna be elected while the ex execution code is running there will be some other VRFs uh, selected, a monitor. They are constantly doing the uh, remote attestation on the execution node to make sure the execution node will run the code uh, with the uh, environment uh, requirement. For example, they have to make sure they have um, 
the uh, uh, the required operating system, required hardware to run the code, and uh, after the code, uh, after the task is executed, uh, they have to make sure the execution node clean clean up all the uh, memory, uh, hard drive, the dot image, make sure they don't leave uh, they leave no trace behind. That can guarantee uh, the uh, information will not uh, be disclosed. And also another thing I I forgot is the network. Um, uh, for example, some um, training model require the network totally isolated from other world, from outside world, to make sure even the code is trying to steal uh, some data and send to the uh, like remote server, because the network is totally isolated. Uh, there's no way to disclose uh, the data. So let's move on to the uh, steps. Uh, first, we have a user zero and user one. User zero has uh, a code, like an algorithm, and uh, he posts the uh, code to the uh, blockchain, and with the price tag is two dollar per use. And user one, um, it doesn't have a code, it doesn't have algorithm, but they have a data. He want to tr use the uh, algorithm from user zero to uh, use his data to train some model. The first thing is uh, the user zero put the uh, code uh, into the blockchain and uh, encrypt it, but uh, the the decrypt the decrypted key uh, user zero will not po post it anywhere else because uh, it's uh, secured. And user one will post the uh, the data to the blockchain. The same, uh, the encrypted key um, the data is encrypted mode and the decrypted key. Uh, user one will not post anywhere. Just a uh, keep uh, secured inside the user one. The next step is uh, when the new block uh, broadcasted to uh, the older nodes. The other nodes will trying to uh, running the VRF to uh, trying to win the task because uh, if they win the task, they can make money on it. But the user zero and the user one, they are not allowed to uh, join the competition because they either own the code or the own the data. Uh, they cannot uh, run. Uh, they cannot run this task. Let's see. Uh, we have a uh, uh, few nodes uh, winner, like uh, eighteen. A, a, it won, and uh, they also have a, a J value is four, which is a uh, Harris. And the uh, user 12 got uh, uh, j equal to 2, and the uh, user 5 j equal to 1, which is the lowest. The other nodes, like 3 or 8, they just uh, uh, unlock. They didn't get the uh, chance. Among those three nodes who won the uh, competition, they're going to have uh, run a consensus between to find who is the uh, highest. In this case, user 18 is the highest. So 18 will be executed. And uh, another two guys, like uh, number 5 and number 12, they are monitor. So in the real execution, the user 18 will contact the uh, user 0 for code, uh, user 1 for the data. He will provide the proof of VRF. And other two nodes, like the uh, 5 or 12, they are monitor. They will do constantly doing the remote attack session on node 18, because 18 is executor. And they, they will give the uh, uh, remote attack session result both to the user 1 and the uh, user 0 uh, to let them know user 18 is actually meet the uh, uh, environment requirement. User 1 and user 0 will verify the uh, VRF from uh, user 18 and also reference from uh, user 5 and uh, 12, they are monitors. They make sure that 18 has the requirement, uh, has met the requirement, they, 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 and then they can give the uh, decrypted, code, uh, decrypted key to back to user 18. In that case, the key will only be used inside a trusted environment.
uh, for example, the environment could be there the network is totally isolated from outside world or only open to the user one and user zero. They just give the the um, the decrypt the key into the user eighteen. And after that, user eighteen will get both the key, uh, both the uh, uh, decrypt the key for the code and uh, uh, the data, so they can decrypt everything in the memory, doing running the uh, uh, the function to train the AI model. At the meantime, the both monitors like five and twelve still doing remote attestation on eighteen, and also while eighteen complete the task. Um, the 5 and 12 still doing the remote attestation make sure the user 18 will remove everything, wipe out everything after the execution uh, to make sure there will no, leave no trace. After they verify uh, their, um, the uh, user 18 has uh, removed everything, they put the uh, uh, result of remote attestation back to the uh, uh, blockchain. And also, user one already got the the result of the training model. The blockchain will run a, a smart contract to issue uh, to reward and penalty if they do the things they claim and also um, meet the requirement. They can get a reward. If they don't, for example, uh, if the uh, user eighteen didn't uh, completely isolate the uh, network. Uh, during the execution, or user 18 didn't clean up the uh, memory or hard drive or a dark image, the user 5 or 12 will report to the blockchain, so 18 will get pa punished. If the 5 or 12 didn't do the right thing to monitor the uh, uh, the uh, remote, uh, remote attack system during the execution, they will get punished as well. So this is uh, how they execute the uh, the code. Um, now let's see the in the real demo. Again, let's starting from the empty desktop. Um, just like what we did last time, we still coming. We starting from the uh, command line to run the layer one blockchain. Again, I'm going to choose the local as I my IPFS. Uh, Bootstrap server and uh, manually generate block. Uh, I don't want using automatic. And uh, again, use one as uh, the block, uh, the room name. Uh, you can choose anything. You, you don't have to choose one because if you choose one, probably I'm using that same room as well. Uh, server is running. I'm going to localhost 3000 and click here to start simulator. Now we are going to uh, start in a few nodes, including one, two, three, seven. Let's see uh, if we have those nodes running. Again, I'm going to put it into a different uh, location. Uh, so we can tell up, we can see all the nodes running simultaneously. We're gonna have um, more nodes running because uh, two also like one and two the because they are the uh, code provider and the data provider they're not supposed to uh, run the uh, um, the VRF so we should have um, maybe one more one more nodes here oh, we have a more nodes here running okay there we go. Now, first we need to give, uh, um, we, let's start a new block. So make sure everyone runs smoothly. Uh, we have the block one, block one, block one, block one. Okay, everyone is ca uh, catched up, the, uh, caught up the uh, latest block. Then let's give, uh, uh, let's give the user one some, some dollar. I see uh, uh, this guy have a 70 gas. Let's give uh, 20 to user zero because user zero is so poor. 
Yeah, user zero is uh, now user zero has twenty dollar, and user zero, as we mentioned last time, he is a developer. He has a code um, running the uh, AI model. Now what he gonna do is uh, post the uh, the AI model online. Uh, he lists a price for two dollar per use. Okay, post. Now we can see uh, in the log, um, you will need the uh, CID, this one, uh, because this one is the address of the, uh, the code. Uh, we're gonna ne need it uh, in our next step. So I will copy it. And the user one is a data owner. Uh, he has uh, a data. And he gonna pay uh, like $3, uh, like this, $3 to run uh, this. Uh, let me replace the uh, CID. So this is pointing to the uh, the code where the code is, and uh, submit to the, uh, uh, the the blockchain. Now let's move to the next block. When we get to the next block, you will see um, the uh, the other nodes is trying to compete the BRF. Let me see. Go. Let's see. You can see the lock. Uh, this guy already got a bad lock. This guy bad luck again, and this one wing, wing, wing. Uh, three nodes like this one, this one, this one is a winning. Uh, probably you can move it here. We can see clearly because another uh, node is bad luck. And we can see the different j, uh, j value. Uh, this one is j value is one. This one number user number seven j level j value is two. And uh, number nine, user number nine, the J is two. So the executor will be one of either user nine or user seven, depends on who actually uh, the first to send the uh, the uh, BRF back to the uh, to the blockchain uh, layer one. Uh, I didn't notice who is the winner, but we will know soon. Now let's move to the next block. Now they got uh, uh, they actually have a consensus already. So user seven said, "I'm a monitor. The executor is number nine. So this nine, number nine, user nine, he actually was the first one to submit the uh, VRF to the uh, the uh, blockchain layer one blockchain. So he is the executor. He knows that already. Uh, see uh, where? Oh yeah, I'm an executor. I'm going to run the task." CID and the others like this guy know I'm a monitor the executor is number nine so they have a consensus on this guy too he is a monitor he doesn't he you know he's not an executor uh, since this user is executor so he gonna have a, a more, more thing to do they uh, send the request to data uh, owner number one also sending the request to uh, the code owner number zero and uh, they got already got the uh, the the answer. Currently, we didn't use uh, to crypto encrypt the key. We just uh, give a, uh, a a a data uh, back from the one uh, the code owner uh, the the data owner, and the the the, the code back from uh, the um, the function owner. So it's very easy. Just a uh, a function plus two string together, and uh, the data is hello and the world. In an array, so the result will be hello world. Here, here we can see hello world is the result. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's move a few block away. So next block, the uh, the layer one blockchain will know all the uh, task has been completed. And then next block, they will trying to do um, the um, calculate the how much money they gonna send to each other as uh, a word. And the next block. We're gonna see the change on the block. Say this guy, uh, he he used to have uh, uh, the balance was uh, eighty seven, but now it's ninety two because he's an executor. So he get a lot of uh, reward, and uh, this guy monitor, uh, he also get a two point five. This one too, the two point five, a Leo to, uh, because it because he did the the uh, monitor work and. Uh, the consensus agree their work so issue two point five, and uh, uh, the user one it didn't get anything because they paid the, for all the costs, uh, they paid three three uh, dollar, 
and uh, this guy got a two dollar because he said um, his code is uh, per, uh, pay per use so every time the code is running he's gonna pay two uh, Leo uh, for using it so this guy uh, got a two Leo uh, from uh, using the code so this is uh, the demo of the uh, on the second use case you can see um, the the code owner and the data owner they didn't know who gonna run the code and uh, they can still trust the execution because uh, the VRF can run them select the no no one can predict uh, even they want to collude with uh, the execution no they didn't know who to collude with and also another tool uh, monitor they doing the remote attestation during uh, before during and after the process they make sure the uh, node actually the executor is doing uh, the, 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 the correct behavior so they actually can trust there's no data leaking and they didn't steal the code or data so um, they, they can have the, um, uh, the function running uh, smoothly without any concern.